Yeah, I mean, this is, if you want to get your 10,000 steps in, come to Mapperton Gardens. Now, what tree is this? This is a, oh dear, it's in Latin. <gasps> oh, there's some visitors coming. They're probably going to be like, this girl is jumping over. They're all kind of watching me thinking, who is this girl who has just jumped the fence? I have this real fear and phobia of cows. And I know that that's absurd, but they're looking at me though. Mm -hmm. Do you see me? I see you. I see you. Now, this, is this where I want to be? Hi everybody, and welcome to another episode here at Mapperton. Um, I'm gonna take you on a walk today. So we're gonna go on one of my favorite walks. Mapperton is 2,000 acres. It's in the middle of nowhere, England. And so there's a lot of space to walk around. But before we head down into the gardens and into the Arboretum, and then all the way around for a couple water, small waterfalls, I'm gonna show you the Dovecote. So the Dovecote was built in 16, 65. As you can see, no one really ever goes in here apart from the doves, thus the spider webs, but we're going to go in here. 1665. Woo! Look at that. That's a lot of dove feathers. Look at this. I mean, wait till I open up. Is are the doves. They're beautiful. They're probably all going to fly away. Look at that. Oh, I mean, it, it's just fantastic. So there's oh, 300 holes, so they call them pigeon holes, but there's 300 holes, and you can see that the doves actually go and hang out there. I'm sure that there's a big party here all the time, but it's just absolutely wonderful. And then they perch themselves all across the slate roof on top, which I'll show you, but <laughs> look at all of them in there. So again, 300 uh, holes, and this was built in 1665. And we've got some little ones over there. There they are. So we've got some newer ones. These look like little, they look quite small. Um, yeah, they're just learning how to fly. Definitely a baby one, learning how to fly. So they haven't quite mastered it, but this is a great place. This is a great training ground for them to fly. It's very, very sweet. So that is the dove cut. Um, oh, you could just sort of spend all day in here, really. Well, at least I could. All right, let's head out. So you can see they also just hang out here. I mean, this is like really, this is their home. And what's wonderful is, are these, um, this pear tree here. So you can see, obviously not ready to pick uh, at all, but it will be uh, towards the end of the summer, beginning of the autumn. We have wonderful, amazing pears that um, are growing here. So, and this will get, we'll, we'll show this again when they're ready to be picked. And I'm definitely gonna be making uh, a pear recipe from these pears. I do that every year, in fact. Uh, oh, there's so much to show you guys. There's the chicken uh, hutch, but we'll do that another time. Then of course, we've got uh, our apple tree here. So these are cooking apples. So again, not quite ready yet, but cooking apples, we have a ton of these. So we make uh, stewed apples. Um, a wonderful apple tree here. You're gonna see lots on the walk that we're gonna um, take you through. And just a little bit last of the roses here, you can see a, a, many of them have sort of shriveled up, but spotted on the, on the dove cut. Right, so let's go for our walk. So there's lots of places on the estate that you can, uh, well, that I can take you on. Um, so a lot of it is private, um, but a lot of it, the first part we're gonna, I'm gonna take you through is actually the public can go uh, that place as well. So let's actually go down and around, um, down and around. Again, here's lovely rosemary. So there's rosemary dotted around everywhere and it's just absolutely magnificent. Feel free to pick some if you ever come to visit. Wonderful. And you can see the English lavender is coming up. So this isn't French lavender, this is English lavender coming up here. There's visitors here, it's very exciting. So it's very, we've got visitors today, which is great. Um, And just walking through here, here's the pergola. 
So again, this uh, in the spring had Japanese wisteria on it, and then uh, which is now gone, but Japanese wisteria, it was white. This is the pergola. Um, lots of brides like to have their wedding, their wedding photos taken through here. It's a beautiful pergola. And inside there is the summer house. We call it the summer house. I don't think I have a key for it. We'll have to do this another time. But I'm pretty sure because now we're open to the public, we lock it. But the summer house has a fireplace in it and it's a great place to paint because um, it's got great views of the gardens looking this way. That's for another episode for sure. That is the old bath. So we can probably just have a quick peek down here, Stephen, but again, it's locked up and it will be another episode, but you can hear the water if we listen really closely. So that is actually where um, the, the bath of, for the house was. So you would, because obviously there wasn't, this, this house was built in, in the 1500s and there wasn't plumbing. So they would go down there and I suspect take freezing cold baths. Um, but that was the original bath of the house. And then just dotted along here. So we're gonna head up and around. So again, spectacular views of the back of the house. And you can just see all those different chimneys and the chimneys that you do see they actually uh, do have a fireplace associated with all of them. I think I've counted before, and I think there's 17 fireplaces in the house because that's, remember the house wasn't heated before. Uh, so obviously having a fireplace in pretty much every single room of the house was an absolute must. So I think there's 17, I'm probably missing a couple, but I'm pretty sure I've counted 17 um, fireplaces as well. They're not all working. We use about, I can count, we use two in the sitting room, one in the hall, one in the drawing room, that's four. And I think that's it. So we only use four out of the 17 or so um, in the main house. So again, this is just as you, as the visitors do come and they are coming, hooray, they can walk through here as well. Um, and this is just beautiful. And again, in spring, it's beautiful in summer. It's beautiful in the winter. It's beautiful. Uh, I miss the autumn. The autumn, the autumn is really beautiful too. The nice thing about a garden is, as my mother-in-law would say, is people come to visit a house once usually but then they go and visit a garden four times a year to see uh, the tours. Go, hi, Andy. Here's one of our gardeners right now. That looks very, very heavy. heavy is, it, is that, what's in there? Just grass. Just grass. Yeah, yeah but it's heavy enough. That's it, you, you, you gotta do this all, how many of these are you doing a day? Oh, it depends, because we've got so much to do. I've done the fountain court this morning. Yeah. Just finished off around the pools. Yeah. So it's, uh, I'm doing a bit of streaming later on. Yeah. So it's just play it by ear. As, as That's a works. lot. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. It's, it's your workout, isn't it? Yeah, Gardening. Yeah, exercise. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. See you later. So that's Andy, one of our gardeners, um, who is uh, obviously uh, carrying quite a load. All right, so let's carry on down here. Steven's being amazing. He's filming all this while walking backwards, which is great. And really, we <laughs> I have to be like, watch out. Um, really, we, again, these episodes, we come up with the content and we think, oh, great, let's film a walk uh, to one of my favorite places on the estate. Let's film the gardens. Let's film a room in the house. But we don't, none of this is scripted. It's just, as you can see, Andy's just uh, come by and that was nice just to have a chat with him. And if we run into any cows, might have a chat with them. Although I don't know if the cows necessarily really like me. All I can say is that I'm super happy that um, visitors are here. And in fact, this is one of my favorite shots and I'm actually gonna get this right now. This is, I mean, 
It's spectacular today. So I'm just gonna lean down and get this shot. Oh yeah. I mean, that is a beauty right there. Did you get that as well? You did. So we're gonna head down through the Arboretum. And again, when you come to visit us, you can walk this way and then I'm gonna take you more into really the private part of the, the estate and the walk. And during the lockdown, um, Nestor and I, um, and Emma as well, we would actually take this same walk pretty much every single day. It was one of the things that we did uh, during lockdown was just go on this walk every single day. We just made sure that we got out no matter what, rain or shine. Now, what tree is this? This is a, oh dear, it's in Latin. <gasps> mm. I should know this, but these leaves have me fooled. So I don't know. What do you think, Stephen? We're going to find out. It's in Latin. We'll, we'll put it. We'll put it down. Mm -hmm. I see. I learn something new all of the time as well. So I learn as well. But again, you, you can just see throughout the different seasons, everything just blooms at different times, and some things bloom. Um, again, you can see here this one, uh, beautiful color, but now it's going a little bit brown on the edges. But then something else will start to bloom which is fantastic. I probably, my favorite time though, is to, to walk through here is definitely in the spring. I feel like there's a, it's got a lot of color, a little bit more color in the spring. And then of course the autumn as well, you can start to see, I mean, we're not, we're still in July, but you can start to see that some of the leaves are starting to um, change. So this is a fantastic magnolia tree, but you can see here that the, the limbs, the branches have needed to be propped up. So they needed to be propped up. I mean, it's quite extraordinary, but when this is in full bloom in the spring, in early spring, it is absolutely sensational. But <laughs> this had to be propped up. I mean, it's quite funny, uh, but again, it's, um, uh, I'm sure a wonderful tree to uh, climb. I'm, I'm absolutely certain that my kids have 100% climbed this tree. Probably that's why this needed to be propped up. <laughs> so, and this is actually really sturdy and you can see it's come into, it's come into the bark here as well. So very, very sturdy. Whoever did that is clever. I mean, really clever because that works a treat. And then this is gonna wind. Here's my arrow to make sure that I'm going the right way. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, this is, if you wanna get your 10,000 steps in, come to Mapperton Gardens. This is just literally one fraction, tiny fraction of the estate, and but one of the main walks to do here. I'm gonna take you beyond we're gonna climb a fence soon Shh. Um, and take you down beyond, the, beyond, beyond there through to my favorite little walking spot. But here is again, a nice place for people to sit so they can just sit and look out at this. Today is an absolutely fantastic day. And this is Mapperton. I mean, this is it. Steven and I are gonna cheat and we are gonna do what Nestor and I do. So this keeps everybody on the footpath and then we can go down through. So again, this is for the public to take the path heading that way, but, and that's why this is um, obviously tied up, but I can do this. So this is what Nestor and I did um, throughout. Oh, there's some visitors coming. They're probably gonna be like, this girl is jumping over. By the way, anybody, when they come here and they hear my American accent, they don't even think I'm a part of this estate. They think I'm a, a tourist, which is quite funny. So we're gonna head down there 
and around, um, which is brilliant. Steven, do you want me to hold the camera so you can get over? I'm gonna get Steven on camera now. That's Steven. A lot of you guys have said such wonderful things about his filmmaking. It is really good. I Thank thought, you all. that's all right. Yeah, he, I send him the notes. So there we go, over back to you, it's okay. quite heavy. So some of you, usually we've got cows out here. Well, they will, they'll come out at some point. You can see where they can, they can drink. Oh, we've got lots of visitors, Stephen, it's so exciting. Um, but they're all kind of watching me thinking, who is this girl that has, with an American accent who has just jumped the fence with a camera? <laughs> I'm sure. That's definitely, because I think a lot of people when they come here, obviously expect um, everybody here who lives in the house to have an English accent. And then, boom, lo and behold, uh, I'm like, hi. And so, yes. So I know we do it, um, uh, for those of you patrons uh, who are Viscount, Viscountesses, Earls and Countesses, you do, uh, I have that monthly live Q&A and it was really sweet because some of you were saying, oh my gosh, you have such a transatlantic accent. And my husband was typing in on the chat saying, no, she sounds totally American. But it's quite funny because over here, people think I 100% sound American. But yet when I go back uh, to America, people always say, oh my gosh, you sound, you, you can tell that you've got a little bit of British accent. So I think it's definitely transatlantic and it's hard not to I mean I've been here 20 years my four children all have really British accents and obviously just so does my husband and so does the family that I married into so it's hard not to pick up on the inflections and also the words so as I said in the live Q&A uh, earlier on in in patron it's like how how would you say I would say to Stephen in the American way, I'd be like, should we go and film some um, uh, good footage today? And we end up today, like that, in America. And then over here, it would be like, should we go film some good footage today? And we end down. And so I think that also makes it sound, and I've had to get that in, I, I just have obviously morphed into that inflection because I'm around it all of the time. And I do say all, I know that that's another one. I think I used to say probably all, that's hard to say now, all. <laughs> I'm like gibbering here, oh good. Um, so we're just gonna head through here. You can see lots of wonderful cow markings there. It is hot today. It's never this hot in England. I mean, maybe it is, but only for like a day out of the year. We've picked the right day, Stephen. So again, I'm gonna take you through, this is the private part of the estate and take you through here. Now, this, is this where I wanna be? Okay. So we kind of did just come through that. <laughs> but we couldn't show you on camera because it was a bit prickly and we somehow got diverted off of our path and into lots of brambles and fern. In a way, we survived, so that's the most important thing. But Stephen and I literally <laughs> just accidentally, I don't know, do we even know how that happened? Okay. I, we have no idea how we went from this path to in there where we were literally like, I mean, it's beautiful, so at least we saw it, but we, I'm sorry we couldn't film any of it because we were holding on for dear life. <laughs> anyway, all right, so this is the path. I'm back on the path. I think because so many things have grown since um, uh, that we, we the, the part of the path was sort of, we just, we were filming, we weren't really looking where we were going, and the next thing you know, we ended up in there. But we're back on, we're back on track, and I've just shut the gate. So, and we must remind people there, because remember there are cows usually dotted around. Um, they're probably basking in the sun somewhere. So we're coming, again, this is a walk that Nestor and I did literally almost every single day 
during our lockdown. And as promised, I can hear it. We're coming up to the waterfall, which should be a little bit further down here. Stephen's very, very good at going backwards. Stephen, why don't you just show everybody what this path looks like? So it's quite treacherous and he's able to walk backwards, um, uh, <laughs> which is quite, which is quite something. So we're going to, you're going to see in a second, a bridge heading over into an area. It's still Mapperton, but we call it Homewood. But I'm going to take you, make sure I can hear it, to, but although it's been quite hot, but the waterfall, the little waterfall is right over there. So here's the bridge that we're going to take over in a second. So if those of you who followed me on social media in the spring, there, this was filled with bluebells. Like it was filled with bluebells. Unbelievable. Um, and that's where we would walk to get the bluebells shots. But obviously, uh, we're now in, in really in deep summer. And I'm just going to show you this lovely little... Um, I mean, when I say it's a waterfall, I mean, it is. So it's a natural water source. And I've even, I've even had some drinks from here. Here you go. It's quite pretty. But you can see things have really, really grown. I mean, when Nestor and I, careful of that, because that's quite um, spiky. When Nestor and I, this not in the spring, this was not grown. You know what I mean? It was quite short still. but just a lovely source of, of water because there's a little stream that runs all the way through, pretty much all the way through the estate. Um, and I bet that water is quite warm right now. So you can see Mapperton is, it's very green, it's very wild. There's just something about being out in nature. So we're gonna head over this little sort of bridge which goes over this stream here. And I'm probably gonna quiet it down a bit because sometimes we'll see deer in this area. So I would say probably one out of three walks that Nestor and I went on during lockdown, we would see um, deer and obviously, uh, it was quite fun and Nestor did get some really good photos as well. So again, this is uh, the private part of, of Mapperton um, and so visitors don't walk through here, um, but we do. So this is just really, really, um, I mean, grown. So careful, Stephen. This is like some serious stuff. So like I said, this is where I was taking those bluebell shots. Now let's check it out. Okay, another fence to climb. Because we lock all of these up and tie them up because technically it's a private woodland. <laughs> But clearly this is, it, I'm sure nobody broke this. I'm sure this is probably because of one of the many storms that we have, but this is private woodland, our private woodland. So I'm just gonna stick that there. I'm gonna head over. And I, again, I'm gonna try to be a bit quiet because um, further along is sometimes where you can see the deer. All right, Stephen, I'll take that. Okay. Okay. By the way, Stephen always gets dressed up. This is what I, in England, everybody still wears, I love it, like a coat. I go to bed in this. You go to bed in this? <laughs> That's too much information for me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's so nice. It's like my father-in-law, he always wears a coat. Um, look at them. I've just heard something. And a lot of times... They're to the right more times than not. So I definitely hear the cows. Or no, was that sheep? Sheep. sheep. <laughs> Sorry, I heard something. Okay. 
So here is where all of the bluebells will, where you can even see some of the remnants of the bluebells here. They've been dried up, but this was filled. Trust me, next year I will get an episode just on bluebells. So Nestor and I would go out here, because Nestor, my youngest, it's always nice to like, listen, he's a wildlife photographer. And just being able to spot woodpeckers, um, even red squirrels, uh, deer. So we're just gonna be quite quiet. Every time I hear a noise, I'm like, what was that? Oh, yeah. You hear the Mapperton sheep? Okay, Stephen, be prepared. We've got a lot of ferns to get through. Here we go. Careful. Now, okay, all right. Still, there still might be some deer. I'm still holding out hope. So, oh, during lockdown, this was literally not here. I mean, it was here, but like that big. So now you've got to really navigate. Whoa. Okay. 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 Ooh. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Ooh. I mean, literally, not only is it a walk, it's a workout. Well, I think those sheep were beyond there. Yeah, so there's, there's a family up there. So I remember walking through this field before in April during lockdown and all the lambs had been born. And so it was really, really sweet. You can see that there's definitely two still lambs. I mean, they're what, four months old? That was in April. And the mother, every time I speak, <laughs> I'm like, how did, can she hear me? Every time I speak, the, uh, she's peering up over this sort of bramble bit here. Yeah, there she goes again. It's quite funny, but they've clearly found a nice grazing spot as well. That lovely family up there. But that's a, one of the baby lambs right there. Do you see that one just munching away? The dark one? Do you see the black one? He or she is just super happy right there. So you can see it's quite dramatic shift of really the landscape and now we're coming into more of the grazing fields. And then we'll head back up and then down. Um, I promise not to get us lost again. But it's just so amazing to see how much has grown since we, well, since lockdown. I mean, this was all just short and everything has just really, which is wonderful to see, absolutely wonderful just to see nature just growing and thriving. Oh, it is rather beautiful. So Dorset is known for its hills. So Dorset, Dorset's landscape is, obviously everybody knows England's so green, um, but because it rains all the time, um, although it's not that green now, um, but Dorset's landscape is beautiful rolling hills everywhere. That's what makes Dorset so fantastic. And also it's part of the, or the Jurassic Coast is in, is in Dorset, so you get these most magnificent cliffs, stunning views 
um, from these cliffs, which again is going to be another episode. Poor Stephen <laughs> is doing a great job walking through this. I mean, it is really overgrown here, but I suspect all of those sheep must love it because it's a lot to eat and they seemed super happy over there. So we're gonna head up and then we're gonna head down again because that's what Dorset does. It goes like this, like I said, not only do you get your steps in, but it is quite a workout. Another fence, which we're gonna go through. We're coming to the end of really the walk that I did throughout lockdown with Nestor most days and Emma, you were on it too. Um, but it's just amazing to see the transformation from this again, this area was filled with bluebells everywhere. Bluebells everywhere. So as soon as that happens again next spring, I will definitely be doing an episode dedicated entirely to bluebells. And I'm gonna head out here. Woo! And we basically have done kind of a huge circle. And again, that was just a, that was just really a snippet of the estate. And you can see where we've had back, we, where we've gone around to where the two troughs are with, for the cows to drink and the gate that we had. Up. Oh, and we definitely won't be going that way because I finally spotted some Mapperton cows. So we're gonna be super careful here. So, because the, as soon as the cows see you, they start coming for you because they're super curious. So Stephen, as soon as one gets up, well, no, we're not, apparently you're not supposed to run. We're supposed to turn around and face them. But I think that they're super happy. They look really relaxed. Those are the same cows that definitely chased me. Okay, there's just something about cows that scare me. As soon as one gets up, so that's why I'd walk quick. As soon as one gets up, then they'll all get up and they start, they're curious. They're just super, super curious. Okay, no one's gotten up yet. They're still lying down. I have this real fear and phobia of cows. And I know that that's absurd, but nope, they're still lying down. Look at me, I'm like, got my alarm bells on. Yep, they're looking at me though. Mm -hmm. They see me, I see you, I see you. Okay, careful here. This is quite swampy. Oh, what was that word, Stephen, I learned from Nestor called Boggy? Boggy. Boggy. What's it? It's like a swamp. Is that right? That I, honestly, that is definitely not, I don't know. I mean, any of you out there want to comment who's watching this, boggy, and you see, when you see a bog, do you say that? So I was like, boggy. I was like, Nestor, what does boggy mean? This is my 13 year old. He's like, it means swampy. I had no idea. So I def definitely learned a new word during lockdown, boggy. Um, my new favorite word. So we're heading up, we're the coast is clear of the cows. We're heading back where we started. We've done it, Stephen. <sighs> Wowzers. Back where we started. It's all that yoga. There we go, hip flexors. Yeah, here we go, I'll take your camera. Okay, let's see how Stephen's hip flexors are. I think they're all right. Look at that. There we go. That's impressive. Back at you. So we're heading up now. We're back on where um, visitors can come. And again, this area, again, I'm gonna show you in the spring, was filled with daffodils first. So tons of daffodils. And then bluebells were, were the bluebells here? Or was it just daffodils? Snowdrops, that's right, snowdrops. That's just how you know spring is coming. Snowdrops were here. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a good walk. That's just like a fraction. We're going to take you as well, but with Nestor on one of the episodes, we're going to take you to the Iron Age Fort, a real Iron Age Fort. Um, and that, that is a hike. Careful, Stephen, right behind you. 
Here we go. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay. There we go. Technical difference. It's all right. He's got a camera that just goes right back at it. So you're going to see in a second where we are. It's all looking very familiar. We've got a goal set up. So a soccer slash football goal set up. And we're going to head down what's called the avenue. And the avenue leads you back to the house and back to the coach house. But people can sit outside here and have picnics if they want to. I think we're a little, we're definitely past maybe lunch time right now. So they're not picnicking, but um, here we are. <sighs> We've made it, Stephen. All right, you guys, I'm just gonna give you this shot and then I'm gonna leave you. This is the avenue. And again, you'll be seeing more of this because this is when it's filled with daffodils, it's quite extraordinary. Um, and I can see Raymond in the, no, is that Beryl? It's Beryl Raymond in the distance. And I gotta go talk to them uh, about the biomass boiler again. So thank you guys so much. And again, thank you to um, all of my uh, patrons uh, for every, um, uh, for your support and really your commitment to my Patreon page. And of course, um, always when you become a countess or an earl uh, of that tier, I always shout you out on the video. So thank you to Cheryl, to Sherry, to Taylor, and to Angeline. Okay, bye for now, you guys. See you next week.